hey guys how are we all doing welcome to my channel my name is violet okolotra i talk about everything about nursing and all skiing in the uk how have we all been it's been a while thanks to my subscribers you are lovely a lot of people were like oh it's been a while we saw you it's been a while are you all right are you all right yes i'm really 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 all right i've just been very very busy with family and busy with work but um, thank you all for your care and support. So today I'll be doing a video on vitreal infusion phlebitis. If you see my email, please can you do a video on this? So guys, I'm in. I'm fully in. This week I'll do a video on vitreal infusion phlebitis and I'll also do a video on pressure risk assessments. I, I, I'm going to work on all the new skills and all skills. So you'll have them this week and next week, hopefully by the special grace of God. So before I do this video, I really want to say big congratulations to my friends who passed their all skills up. Intelligent nurses, wonderful nurses, articulated nurses. You guys are just too much. Even those who had one or two receipts, you know, and we talked about it, the booklet. So guys, I'm super proud of you welcome to your band five rows and big congratulations to you all so let's get started into our video for today before we do that if you've not subscribed to my channel if you've not liked my video guys please you have to keep on encouraging me subscribe like my video share my videos with your friends preparing for all ski exam and that's it so let's get started on vitreal infusion phlebitis what is vitreal infusion phlebitis it is one of the new skills that has been added to your OSCE exam and it is eight minutes but trust me when i tell you you finish in six minutes because it is a very very simple skill like any other skill the assessor runs you through the skill and she's, she can say to you like this um Vip, um, hello, your new skill, your next skill will be vitreal infusion phlebitis. You have your maniki, I'll be answering for your maniki, and you have your photograph. Are you happy to start the skill? So she runs you through the ski and she asks you if you have any question. If you ask, ask, but you shouldn't have any question because it's a straight forward skill. So now, what do you expect to get in this skill? Like I said, a maniki who has a cannula on her hand or on his hand and a photograph on the table it is the photograph you use to assess the maniki's hand because you know you can see redness on the maniki's hand you can't see any swelling you know it's not possible so it is the photograph you use to what to assess now what are you assessing for number one redness number two swelling number three hardening of the surrounding tissue number four extensive palpable cord Pain, you can't see pain on the photograph. You have to ask the maniki if he or she is having any pain. And remember, the assessor answers for what? For the maniki. So that's all about the station. Very simple. Before I practicalize the station, I'll run you through the five markers of VIP. VIP zero, the cannula site appears healthy. I'll show you a photograph. In VIP zero, the cannula site appears healthy. There is no word phlebitis. And what is phlebitis? It's an inflammation of the vein. It can be caused by mechanical reason where the cannula used is too big for the vein or some of the medication given to the patient is too harsh so the vein gets inflamed. So phlebitis is an inflammation of the vein. Like I said, there are five markers. In a short form, I'll call it VIP. Now, I want to acknowledge the internet. That's where I got this photograph from. This is a clear VIP zero. Is this picture clear enough? Yes, it is clear enough. There is no redness in this photograph. There is no swelling in this photograph. There is no hardening of the surrounding tissue. So this is VIP zero. The cannula site appears healthy. So if you have such photograph on your exam, go ahead and flush the cannula. The cannula site appears healthy and this is VIP zero. Now, for VIP 1, there is either slight pain or redness. There is slight pain or redness. And like I said to you, you can't see pain on the photograph. You can see redness and the rest. You have to ask your patient if he or she is having pain. And remember, the assessor answers for the patient. So now I show you a photograph of VIP 1. Remember I said either slight pain or redness. Now look at this photograph very well. The redness is what is evidence there is redness in this photograph and this is what vip one if there is no redness on the photograph you can ask the guy the patient are you having any pain and if she's having any pain score the pain and you can just use your intellectual quotient and you know 
where it falls in using your IQ alone just tells you where it falls in so now vip one like i said it has slight pain or redness really simple very simple now let's go to vip two vip two two pointers must be present here that there is pain redness or swelling so out of these three i've mentioned two must be present redness swelling then pain now look clearly at vip two did you see redness here yes very evident there is redness there is swelling you can see it redness is there swelling is there so this is a clear photograph of what of vip two so either of these three i've mentioned two must be present redness swelling and what and pain and like i said for pain you can't see on the photograph you have to proceed to what to ask the patient now let's go to what v3 in vip3 there is pain there is redness there is swelling and there is hardening of the surrounding tissues pain redness swelling and hardening of the surrounding tissue now look at this photograph this is a photograph of vip3 there is redness there is swelling if you look at it it looks like a scar towards this area it looks like a scar so that is the hardening of the surrounding tissue now for vip4 there is pain, there is redness, there is hardening of the surrounding tissue, there is swelling, and there is what? Extensive palpable venous cord. I'll show it to you in a minute. This is what? V4. Very evident. There is pain, there is redness, there is swelling, and there is extensive palpable venous cord. You can see it. Redness is there, extensive. You can see how how it's pointing, extensive venous palpable cord. It's really easy, guys. When I practicalize the skin, you will understand this better. Then for VIP five, there is pain, there is redness, there is swelling, hardening of the surrounding tissue, there is extensive palpable venous cord, and there is what pyresia. Really, really simple, guys. Now note this. You can only flush the cannula if it's VIP0 or VIP1. Never flush the cannula if you have VIP2, if you have VIP3, if you have VIP4, if you have VIP5. Never flush the cannula. You can only flush the cannula for VIP0 and VIP1. Really, really, really easy, guys. Now, before I practicalize this key, these are the parts of the cannula I want you to take note of. This is the positive pressure cap or the pod pod or positive pressure cap this is the clamp remember to open the clamp before administering your pussy flush all right guys so if you have any question feel free to pop it up i'll be happy more than happy to answer your question so let's get started i'll be practicalizing the skill now hello are you all right my name is Violet Okolocha, and I'll be one of the nurses looking after you. Now, this reminds me, before you do this, there is a common thing I want you to take note of today. What if your assessor tells you, assume you've checked for scene safety, assume you've provided privacy to your patient, and assume you've done your hand hygiene. What will you do? A lot of people say, I get thrown off balance. Please, guys, don't be thrown off balance. If your sister tells you, assume you've checked for scene safety, assume you provided privacy, and assume you've done your hygiene, just go straight to your patient. Hello, my lovely. My name is Violet, and I'll be one of the nurses looking after you today. Is it all right if I confirm your full name and date of birth? Don't be thrown off, guys. Like I keep saying to every one of us, all skills is one of the simplest. Huzzah. Let's get started into the skill. I'll start from the finish, from the um, beginning to the end. All right. I approach my scene. I see my scene is safe to approach. I provide privacy for my patient. And I do my hand hygiene according to WHO method. Palm to palm, right palm over left dosum, vice versa. Fingers interlaced, fingers interlocked, fingers interlocked, rotation of the form, rotation of the form. Tips to the finger, tips to the finger, and the wrist. So my hands are clean. I can now approach my patient. Hello, my name is Violet and I'm one of the nurses looking after you today. Is it alright if I confirm your full name and date of birth, please? Oh, bless you. And your your date of birth 
Oh, 15 February 1940. Bless you, honey. Is he alright if I just double check with your wristband, please? I have here John Brooks, date of birth, 15 February 1940, hospital number 10010. I said so with the paperwork on my hand. I can confirm I have the right patient. John, can I just confirm with you? Do you have any allergies at all to foods, to drugs, to lattes, or adhesive, please? Oh, bless you. You have no allergy. John, the reason I'm here today this morning is because I want to inspect your cannula. Is this a convenient time to do that, my love? You don't need to use the washroom? Oh, bless you. Pick your photograph on the table. I'll be doing VIP zero. So this is now my photograph. John, I can see from your cannula that there is no redness, there is no swelling, there is no thickening or hardening of the surrounding tissue. Are you having any pains near the cannula sites? Oh, bless you. You are not having any pain. Oh, bless you. So you're not having any pain. Wow. So this looks like VIP zero to me. There is no pain, no redness, no swelling. The cannula site appears healthy. So I'm happy. Are you happy for me to flush your cannula? It's all right. Oh, bless you. All right. Thank you so much for being happy for me to flush your cannula. All right. I'll leave you with the call bed, John, while I go and assemble my equipment. Is that all right, John? Thank you so much, John. Now, do your hand hygiene after doing your hand hygiene pick your prescription chart this is a prescription for john brooks the patient name is there the doctor's signature is there the blip number is there and it's being prescribed three means of posiflush all right okay do your hand hygiene again and assemble all the equipment you need so assemble all the equipment you need. What are the equipment needed for this skill? You need a posy flush, you need a cleaner wipe, and that is all. Majority of the time, everything is set out for you in the tray because this, this uh, skill can either be a tray procedure or it can be a trolley procedure. If it's not set out for you, clean your tray or your trolley with cleaner wipe for 30 seconds allowed to dry for 30 seconds. So I assume I have cleaned. In fact, let me do everything. I put on my apron. So remember, I've done my hand hygiene. I put on my apron. I put on my gloves. Validate all your equipment. So I clean my tray or my trolley for 30 seconds and allow to dry for 30 seconds, put in the clinical waste. This is my cleaner wipes. The expiring date is 2023. See, the expiring date is valid, it's not expired. This is my cleaner wipe. The expiring date is 2023, it's not expired. This is my posy flush, my pre feed syringe. The expiring date is 2022, it's not expired. So I've assembled all my equipment. Now I'm happy to go over to my patient. If you like, you can change your apron or change your glove. It is a clean procedure. It is not a sterile procedure. So now I go over to my patient. But remember to use what aseptic techniques. Aseptic techniques means try not to infect anything like using your hands to be touching the pod. So now I've assembled all my equipment and I go over to my patient with my prescription. Hello, John. Are you all right, my love? John, I'm back. Are you sure it's a convenient time? Oh, it's a convenient time. All right. So I'm back, John. Can I just confirm again your name and date of birth? Okay, John Brooks, date of birth, 15 February 1940, hospital number 10010. And John, can you also confirm to me that you have no allergy at all to namasaline, to anything? Oh, bless you, you have no allergy. All right, John, let's go ahead. So you see, I validated my patient's. I have updated my equipment, I have updated my patient's name, so I've done all the rights of medication. Fertilize that, that you've completed all the rights of medication. I have the right patient, I have the right drug, it is going to the right route, the doctor's signature is this, so I've validated, in fact, I've, I've, I've completed all the rights of what? Of medication. Now, the next thing is to clean the pot. You can hold this the way I'm holding. Verbalize, you will clean the pot for 30 seconds 
and you will allow to dry for 30 seconds so clean the pot for 30 seconds and allow to dry for 30 seconds if you like you can use a different wipe to clean the two pots if you like you can use a single wipe so i've cleaned my pot for 30 seconds and verbalized that you allow the pot to dry for 30 seconds so this goes into now it goes into my clinical waste now the next thing to do is to pick your pre-filled syringe now if you look at my syringe clearly you can see that there is air endeavor to expel all the air in the syringe how do you expel it just losing this a bit i'm sorry losing this a bit and you push you can see the air is all out and take the out put in the clinical waste and attach this to the pod or the positive pressure cap so it's attached now to the pod now what do you have to do use aseptic techniques you see the way i attach it to the pod i didn't use my hand to touch it that is aseptic techniques in this scale i attach to the pod the next thing to do is to release the clamp i release the clamp after releasing the clamp you push your pussy flush from the prescription where those stream is Push your pussy flush or your pre-filled syringe using a stop-start technique or a pulsating action. What is a stop-start technique or a pulsating action? Start, stop. You see it? You see it? Start, stop. So, if you like, you can leave 0.3 mils of normal saline left in the syringe. If you don't like, you can flush it all. It really doesn't really matter. So, you push. Hello, my love. Are you having any pain as I'm flushing your cannula? Oh, bless you. You are not having any pain. That's good. So now I finish flushing. What do I have to do? I take my syringe out of this, put in the clinical waste. All right. I close my clamp. You can see. Then I clean my pot for 30 seconds and I allow to dry for 30 seconds seconds all right Tony. thank you so much for your cooperation all done for you your cannula is patent all right so we'll monitor your cannula within 12 to 24 hours all right so we'll keep monitoring the cannula just to know when it's not all right is that all right i will just sign the prescription just to say i flushed your cannula is that all right my love that's all right so pick your bio yeah i found my bio and sign i have signed I have put in dates, I have put in dates, and I have put in time. So, I have signed, I have given this medication. Remember, before you sign, take away your glove, take away your apron, all right? So, take them all away. You can see I'm doing this video on my own because I've been so busy. I've been really busy to even, you know, it's really been hectic. But I hope I've been able to pass the skill enough to you. All right. So what if it's VIP one? If it's VIP one, you see a slight redness or the patients have pain. Go ahead and ask. In a scale of zero to ten, zero being the least and ten being the highest, what is your pain score? You know. And if you say two or three, you can still go ahead and flush. Now somebody will say, oh, what if I have VIP two? What if I have VIP two? You said you cannot flush for VIP two. If you have VIP two, you are not allowed to flush. You have to verbalize that you will discuss with the doctor and you will take the cannula out and discuss with the doctor. Probably he may like to start on antibiotics for the patient. But don't worry too much. I'm sure you will get VIP0 or VIP1 because they actually want you to practicalize the skill. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your support. Don't forget, if your assessor tells you, assume you've provided privacy for your patient, assume you've done your hand hygiene and assume you checked for since go ahead and introduce yourself to the patient ask for any allergy remember to inspect the cannula sites with the photograph i can see from your candles i can see the photograph <laughs> i can see from your cannula sites your cannula appears healthy or there's slight redness are you having any pain and if the patient is having any pain in a scale of zero to ten and don't forget to sign sign because you've given it validate your equipment it's a very simple ski, guys. So thanks for watching. I really love you all. Thank you so much for your support. The support is massive. I can see we've hit over a thousand subscribers. Guys, I love you all. Feel free to pop up any question, anything that bothers you. Ask me. I'll try my best to answer. I love you all. I will see you hopefully two or three days time or next week on pressure weeks assessment. And until then, keep passing your own ski exam. I love you all. Bye, guys. Bye.